Hello and welcome to The Silburn Show. Today we're joined by a guest that has been featured recently in my Facebook Live and she has recently opened her second hair care store in Peckham, London, all coming up on The Silburn Show. Before we introduce our guests, I'd like to touch on a recent event, the Better Awards and Jesse Williams resonating and poignant speech on his receipt of the Philanthropy Award on what it means to be black in America and promoting support and respect of black women by the African American community. It was very reminiscent of a speech by Malcolm X. Now, this speech did not have any hate speech and was a call for unity and equality in my perspective. However, a petition was started by a presumably Caucasian lady claiming his speech was hate speech and that, as such, the great anatomy actor should be fired from the ABC primetime show as one would have been had it been any other race. The question is, does standing up for one race, social equalities, inequalities and injustice result in the exclusion of the social inequalities and injustices and plight of other races? And as such, does it result racial discrimination and divisions? Are movements such as Black Lives Matter and Oscar So White in fact racist, or can there be no racism against a race who has had the system promulgated in their favor so long? Share your comments below and let us know where you stand on the matter. Now, joining us today, we have Sandra Brown. Hi. Fantastic. Sandra Brown Pinnock, isn't it? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Now, we first met Sandra at her Lucian store and then the opening of her second Zandi store in the Peckham Rye. She holds the mantle of the, and I'm going to say this and she can clarify this, the first female black owned Afro Caribbean hair care store in London South East. Is that correct? Well, for na now, at this present time, yeah. but we, as we know, everybody know this lady, it's an African lady called um, Yinka. Yeah, yeah. She was also in Peckham and she was pushed out by um, the high street, which is the Haitian, she was pushed out by right, them. Right. So since Yinka's left, then there hasn't been another one. So, um, right. So, so therefore, you're following in a particular stream. Yes. Okay. But Yinka was the first person that set yes. the trend, if anything, yes. right? Yes. Fantastic. So, Sandra, you went from a long and undoubtedly fulfilling career in mental health and social care to starting your own business as the first black-owned Afro-Caribbean hair care store, and you cover both manufacturing and distribution. While you had always had an interest in hair care and hair extension, what gave you the decisive push to leave your career behind and follow your passion? I think what gave me the decisive push, um, leaving mental health, because as you mentioned, yes. um, we had a business in social care where we supported mental health service users in the community. And that's, you know, as, as it's still going. We have we, my, my husband run that side. Yes. So we still do that. And that's it's quite successful. I'm a people person. I like, yes. you know, um, I like interacting with people, talking to people, you know, just finding things out and looking after people. Very helpful. You know, try to help wherever I can. And so my thing is I'm always into fashion. I love fashion. Yes. I love makeup. I love you know, just everything about I'm, I'm really a girly person. And so when it comes to hair, I, I had a, you know, it's, it's been a, a long standing thing for me. Why is it that there wasn't any of us as a black woman in the hair industry, especially retail, that we sell to our own, yes. sell our own hair, sell our own ex hair yes. extension. It's always you go in. And sometimes, you know, I think that we as a black race, we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're scared of saying it. Why is it that it's Asians and it's not anything to do with, you know, being racist or anything, mm -hmm. but why do you have to go for an Asian man to tell you about your own hair yes. when they really don't know anything about it and to sell you your own product? And that was the point for me yeah. where I decided that, you know, I need to do something about this. But, you know, I was in the hair industry um, at my own factory, not, not my own, but with someone, partner with someone. And so I was selling hair, doing the hair extension and selling yes. that for a long time before I, I got into the retail side of it. And the reason why I got into the retail side of it was because I wanted a product for my hair, mm -hmm. went in the store, the guy said they didn't have it, but he just stretches and picks something up and said, no, we haven't got it, but use this. Right. And 
I was angry at first, but then I felt ashamed that I had to do that by going to someone who didn't know anything about mm -hmm. the, my hair, didn't know anything about the product, to ask them about it. So it's like going to ask someone about your own child. Yes. You know, when you have your own child, and you should know everything yes, about your yes. child. So you go, and so with that, I said, no, I've got to change this. I'm going to go into the retail side of it. And that is how I started. So therefore, um, you mentioned earlier in the, in the opening about Yinka started the business. Mm. And then Yinka was pushed out of the business based on the, the competition, I presume, mm -hmm. right? And, and also with the whole Jesse Williams bit, where we talk mm. about, is it being anti other nationals or is it, would you, say you, would you say I could partner with an Asian business in the hair care business? Yes, I, I, I would say yes, I could, but why would I? Mm -hmm. why, why would I do that? Yes. And if I'm saying that, you know, we spend so much as a black race and as, yes. especially a black woman, we spend so much in this industry. So I think that that is, I think that that is our right. I, I would use that word, and some might think that it's strong for me to use that word. Yes. But I would say it's our right to, 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 to have ownership of yes. it, and we have no ownership of it. And what I want to do is to show that we can own this and you know, just hope that I'll inspire others to do the same and just come in. We should have a part of it. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not one to say, oh, we're going to yes. push everybody out, push the Asians out or push this race out. But we should be seen as having a part of it, a part of it. Uh, maybe at 60% of it, we should have that. Right. And we should own that. Right. Because we spend in that. And it should stay in our community. So that we can, in employment, you know, so many things that we can do. Because As a result of that. Yes. So therefore, now the majority of hair care and extension industry, as we said, are well, saturated by the Asian community. And I want to know, since the launch of your extension and your business, of what is now two store, has there been an outpouring of support from the black community? Yes, I must say that there has been a lot of support. I'm getting a lot of support from, you know, near and far. But I think that... Yeah, I, want, I want to stop you there because any support from the black community would be the community which you're going to get the support from because they're the ones that buy the product, isn't yes. it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, and, but I think that we, I, mm. I need to see more because, you know, especially looking in Peckham and when I look, uh, um, on Peckham Rye and I will walk down and just kind of scout mm -hmm. and you still look in the stores in the the Asian stores and then you look in my store you still see that it is you know there are more people that's in there but I think that it's about because it's my third week in, in Peckham really so it's about change you know change how you spend because I know that people mm. just think oh I need a hair and they don't even remember or think about it to so say, oh, I'll go to Sandy's. But it's, so it's about change, about mindset, changing that mindset. Yes. And people remembering that, oh, there's, there is now a black owned store on Rye Lane that I need to go to. Right. And it's about, you know, I use social media a lot to get that across and I send my things out and ask people to like and share it because we got to get it out there to say that there's one store here, there's one in Peckham, there's one in Lucian, and you know, many more that I'm, and, and I'm not yeah. stopping here. I, and I just hope that someone else join in with me to say, yes, we can do it. Even having a consortium, mm -hmm. because when you look at other community, they work together and it's about us working together. So it's about coming together, you know, asking my advice and we can come mm -hmm. together and have like a consortium by where we said, okay, then we're going to start another one by this group, a group of people. Because a lot of time we're, we, we fear in, yes. to, in going into business because we, we, we're scared that we might fail. But mm -hmm. I don't think failure is, is, is negative. I think failure is positive for me because you learn from, yes. if, you, if you don't do something, you'll never learn. Right. And so it's about learning. So even if you fail, then you say, okay, then these are the do's and don'ts that I, I shouldn't do. Fantastic. Now, I don't think Sanju, and before when I met you, I used to say Zandi, Sanju's, but now I've got it right now. It is Sanju, and you're Zandi's. Yes. X. Now, you know Tony Wade? I've heard of him. you heard of him? Yes. yes. Well, Tony Wade has been on the red chair uh, once, and uh, it was supposed to be a 30-minute show. It turned into be a, a one-hour show. Tony Wade was from the, the group or the company, Dyke and Dryden, mm. first, they're the ones that actually created the Afro-Black mm. Hair store and the Afro Hair show, which happens now, which mm -hmm. is owned by Asian. Asians, right? Now, would you say that you're following in his footsteps? And what legacy do you think women like you and Salem Wynne Baxter, Salem Wynne Baxter, who also has been on the show, mm. are setting, reclaiming the black hair care industry back into our community? 
Would I say I'm falling in Tony's footstep? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> You're a trendsetter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm following my own footstep. Yeah. Um, no, on a serious note, um, I think that, as I said, looking at the oil industry, I think that what I, what I want to do is to inspire, yes. to inspire other um, black women, especially women, because I know that we are strong. Yes. Women are very strong. Our mouth is our power. Yeah. We, we can talk a lot. Yeah. And you know, we think we're think we able to dissect things um, with no disrespect on men, but we are able to do that. Well, don't feel bad because we're gonna have a woman prime minister very soon. <laughs> Well, a second one. So women run things, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and so we can multitask. Yes. And women can multitask. Men are just one direction, but women, we can multitask. Yes. And I think that it's about, you know, setting that trend and showing that, you know, we can do it. That there's nothing that is, is too difficult and there's nothing that is too hard. Mm -hmm. And if we, set our, if we set our mind to it, and that, but make sure that the plan that we have, that we can execute it. So you can't have yeah. a plan. If you have a plan, make sure that you can execute that plan. Because mm -hmm. everybody can have a plan. Yes. But make sure that the plan that you have, you're able to execute it. And also your USB. Know what your USB is. Mm -hmm. What's your unique selling point? Yes. What is it that you're selling? That's something it's going to attract you know, the other person out mm -hmm. there. And that is what I did with all my, if, you know, my stores are different. Everyone say, you know, oh, this should be in the West End. And I'm like, why? Exactly. Why should it be in the why West End? Why take it away from the community to the West, to the West End? End? Therefore, you live in the community. Yeah. Exactly. And so I want to make sure that I say to people, that is for you, it's for the community. Some people are saying, oh, we look at the store and we just think it's expensive. And I'm mm. like, why? So I want to remove away from this, you know, I say pile them high, yes. but make it be a store. You come in, from you walk through my door, it should be an experience, you know, from customer service to prices. And I look at prices a lot because I know that for the mm. black community, price is a major thing for mm. them. They will walk a mile for just one P. So I make sure that I look at the next door, what their prices are, and I make sure I gauge my prices. So that someone, I, I, I didn't go in there because yeah. it's too expensive. So I look, because I know price is a big thing in our community. When we shouldn't do that, but mm. it's a big thing. And it, that is something that we so, need to address. So if you, if you break it down, the price factor, because one of the things I always hear is that the, the Asian guys, they can actually give very competitive rates. What was the key, what should I say, revelation that you got that, sh that showed you how to master that? Well, <laughs> it's not even a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> it's just about buying in bulk because ah, when I... Well, that's when it. I, exactly. When I started, um, and I, I don't know who I've told this story to, there is a, a very popular brand, can I say the name yeah. of the brand? Called Share Moist, uh -huh. that everybody used, you know, most black women use. And I was buying that for £79.95. Yes. Because I could only afford, when I just opened my store, no, everyone was passing, still going to the Asian. Mm -hmm. And so I could only buy a dozen at a time. I put it out on Facebook, it went on social media, it went viral, people start walking through my door. Mm -hmm. I was able to start buying five, six, seven dozen. Guess how much I start paying? £22.95. Yes. When I asked the guy, how? He said, you just, just blase, oh, you're buying in bulk. Wow. So I had to put out another um, thing on Facebook to say, listen, if I get the support, then the same price, price that they're selling on the high street, I'm able to sell. Because at the time, I was selling my brand, the, the share moist for mm -hmm. £13.99. Everyone used, I said, so, you know, why is it so high in here? While on the high street, they're selling it for 7 and I died. I used to say, well, they make it, it's fake, it's yes. not, because I couldn't believe it. But they do get it at that price. So now I get it at 22 cents. I can sell it for the 7 99 yeah. just as on the high street. So my point is, if you don't support mm -hmm. us and support the, 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 the business and support the, you know, black, any black business mm -hmm. in the community will fail because you have to buy in bulk so that you're able to give that back to the community. Right, right. So therefore, and so the support then from the community, that is overwhelming. Yes, it has been. And I, I must say, you know, I'm, I'm blessed in that way yeah. that I'm getting that support. But I want to see more locally because yeah. I get it, as I said, from near and far. People as far as Great Yarmouth, Birmingham, Luton, you know, they do come yeah. and they, they, you know, but I want to see it locally. So when I walk on the high street, I must see that there, yeah. the high street, you just walk into my store. But well, Sandra, even if you've got your store, which looks very nice and very lovely deco and should be in the West End, a lot of it has to do with the personality still at the same yes. time, isn't it? and the customer service. And the customer yes. service. So yes. therefore, they all work together as one because yes. you are the brand factor. Mm. Mm. So therefore, it is not just about, because I know you've got black 
companies or restaurants or whatever like that, I would not go in there, not just because I'm not being patriotic, but because I like a good customer service. Mm. And I think that is one of the key factors. Yes, uh, and, I, and I think that that is something that, especially going into um, business as, as we as black people, we have to make sure that you, we get some training. Mm. I, I know that we don't, like, we don't like to spend money. We like to say, mm. oh, we're going to open a business. But you don't, if you don't spend money, then you can't make money. Mm. You have to spend, you mm. have to put out to take back in. And so I think that you have to spend around, especially on customer service, you know, just even the, you, you, your ambiance, just the way your place yes. looks. So that at least it attracts someone. So let me have a, just, you know, so many people just walk in and said, oh, we're just having a look. Yeah. From black, white, pink, everybody walks in. Yeah. They said, what a beautiful store. And so, we, but us, I just think that for us as the black community, when it comes to customer service, we are, we, that's where we fall down. And so having a business, I think mm. as the proprietor, you have to train your staff. Okay, so therefore, just before we take a break, um, so would you say then there are some courses which are out there for mm -hmm. persons who want... And I could do it because I... I'm, I was going to say that. I'd, I'd be the, um, the marketing director, if anything. <laughs> Can I be the marketing director? You just stand up and talk and do what you do naturally. <laughs> and I, love, I think that is fantastic, really. You know? But ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for this first part. And um, I'll coming back, we'll speak more to Sandra about... Black Lives Matters and about the black community and how we can actually strengthen the, the black pound as well. Thank you very much. Well, first and foremost, the, the, the referendum and the leave. I was just so shocked when I got up in the yeah. morning to hear Boris that. Boris was shocked as well. He wasn't expecting that. <laughs> he, was he? Was, he thought it was going to be... He thought, he, uh, well, many people I are saying that so. he, he thought that it was going to be still remain. You know, he was playing a political game. <laughs> I, I, why, why, why do we find the need to be saying support black business? Yeah. Because our community really don't support our own business because, you know, if you look at the, the Jews, oh my God, the Jews shop nowhere else. They, mm. they shop in their own community. The Jews mm. will not go anywhere else to buy whatever it is, whether it's kosher, whatever yeah. that they need. When you go to Stanford Hill and you look at all their shops there, the Jews will drive a hundred miles to shop at another Jewish store. Yeah. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like and don't forget to comment but first subscribe. I am Sandra from Sandy's. Sandy's here in Beauty. I've been just on the, the Silicon show and I think it's a fantastic show. You should like and subscribe, share it with your friends and it's a must. You must watch it. Fantastic show. I know that wasn't in the script. I, I figured that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because things have happened so much.